Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordam. We are All back right, for then. some more Pillars of Eternity with the Triple Crown difficulty settings. In the previous episode we finished up clearing the first level of Kednua. We had some fights, we picked up some loot, and now we're gonna sp um, speak to the steward. There is also oh, apparently a door down there that seems to require speaking to her. Hey. In order to open it, I felt Mayor Walt's passing. You slew him. He gave me no choice. It saddens me to hear it, but part of me is grateful to no longer have to wait and worry in darkness. This place has always known its master, long as it's had one. It has a will all its own, which has little to do with the castle and much to do with the land it's built on. It looks to you as Mayor Walt's successor now, whether you care for it or not. A dubious honor, inheriting a fortress both broken and cursed. But in the right hands, it could be so much more. If you had only seen it in its day, will you... will you stay? Mayor Walt said that I must go to the City of Defiance in search of the Queen. Okay, no voice acting. The energy seems all at once to drain from the air. I see. If it's the Fiance Bay you seek, I'm sorry to tell you that I've come a long way for nothing. The Eastern Barbican collapsed decades ago, and Mayor never got around to rebuilding it. The road here is a dead end. He got as far as gathering materials before his mind became... preoccupied. I could... Make arrangements to have it repaired, if it is your will. When it ceased to be the previous master's will, I became powerless to do anything about it, for what I am, for what am I but the master's instrument. It would take time, but far less than finding another route to Defiance Bay. Okay. What does being the master of Cadnu entail? Why? There are many responsibilities involved in maintaining a keep. The extent to which you wish to get involved is entirely up to you, of course. Part of the reason I am here is to ensure that things run smoothly in your absence, provided we have been given instruction. If you instruct me on which repairs you wish to conduct next, I will make the necessary arrangements. These may take some time to finish, but each will provide you with additional resources once they are complete. Given somewhere to place them, we can hire tradesmen to provide you with supplies or ingredients. Repairing the keep will raise your prestige and draw both helpful individuals and unwelcome attention from bandits and opportunists. If we can raise the keep's security in turn, these will become less of a concern. You should know, however, that the position does come with some risk. Your name will grow in fame and you must contend with threats to the keep. And then there are other things. Was there anything else, my lord? Ah, oh, my lord. <laughs> what do you mean by risks? Mayor Walt's curse was, its, was his own, a watcher's curse. But his predecessors have not fared better. There is a presence within the keep, or rather, far beneath it. At least, such has been the conclusion drawn by all who have come to this place, for what spirits still linger in the endless spots oft speak of a master below. Every effort to settle here has failed, from the time of our Aedirian colonists onward. Beasts rise from the endless pots until the new lord or lady is no more. The one who dwells below, this master, does not tolerate rivals, it seems. I have seen, from time to time, intrepid explorers descend to lay claim to what answers they can, but none return. This is the force which has kept Kednua a barren ruin, and robbed me of my hopes. The endless paths! That, my friend, is where I must go, where we must go, if you will go with me. Whatever devils lie beneath, think to what knowledge we will find. Perhaps this master speaks a Diren? What are the endless paths? The endless paths of Odnua. That is the name given to the labyrinth beneath the keep. The Earl, he... We were warned by the Glanfadans that this site was cursed, 
and there is a legend attached to it, though at the time we thought nothing of it. The ruins were built, it is said, by a powerful Ingwithan named Od Nua, who ruled there until his people turned against him. They destroyed his endless paths and filled many of the upper tunnels with, uh, in with soil and stone. No one living knows how far the, uh, down the tunnels stretch, and few who have ventured there have returned. There is much talk of riches and treasure. The promise of Ingwithan relics along, alone has drawn many fortune seekers. To their deaths, I fear. And who is this master below? I could not say with any certainty. I believe it must be tied to the man said to have been the architect of the Endless Paths, the Ingwithan tyrant, Od Nua. Some claim his spirit endures, or at least has laid a curse upon the site. I cannot imagine much remains of its work, for, its, for the ruins have been here a thousand years or more. But what is left is impressive. The Earl certainly thought so. You must have seen, while below, the hand of the great statue Od Nua constructed. We did. Perhaps it is a statue, a statue of Od Nua himself? But am I not the master of Ked Nua? Of course you are. The keep would have no other. But the endless paths are a different thing entirely. It is unfortunate, really, that they are so closely entwined. If the master below is not dealt with, there will always be a threat to the keep from within. I... I know it is much taken, in, but if you would remain, if you would be lord of this place, then I can only advise you to seek out this foe before it destroys you. I have other questions. <clears throat> yes, how can I help? So, how do I repair this Barbican? Merwald set aside materials for the Barbican, and they are still available to you. In the future, if you wish to make further repairs to the keep, we will need coin for supplies and labor. Well, time to find this queen in the City of Defiance. You must know, this queen you are looking for, Defiance Bay has no queen. The Mequins of Edir haven't reigned here since the war. The only queen with any powers there is Wodeka. I am told they erected an exquisite temple in her honor there, but I was never able to see it. If you mean to go there, we can get started right away on repairing the Barbican. You only need to tell me what you wish to do and I'll make the necessary arrangements. Meirwald kept a ledger, as it happens, and I have taken the liberty of updating it. You could take a look if you wish. Sure, let me see what repairs I can make. That will get underway at once. The steward's voice bellies a giddy excitement. No, my lord, that, is, that this is but the first and least of a great many undertakings. The keep supported a great many buildings and servants for many years. If you should wish it, we can repair some of the outlying structures and these will bring you wealth and recognition, drawing people to your service. Rebuilding the defenses will keep your grounds from becoming overrun, as they did under Merwald's keeping. You need not choose all at once. I am pledged to your aid, and so long as you are master here, we shall always be linked. You need not step upon these grounds to speak with me. Wherever the travels may take you, you can make your will known to me if you but reach out. Oh, but first, of course, the Barbican. Okay, so we have our own stronghold now. We are masters of Kednua, and we are able to make some repairs to the buildings in the area. For now, we're just going to go with the Eastern Barbican, uh, as this one uh, gates the passage to the Wooden Plains, the crossroads between Kednua, Durford, and Defiance Bay. And these are all places we want to go to. So, it's free. Let's do it. It's free, and by the way, also instant, because this is the first one. But then you have to wait. So, is there anything else here that I really want? It will allow me to rest, which is cool. The main keep. Upgrading the main keep will repair your great hall, allowing visitors and adventurers to be available to you and your companions. Uh, a lot of this stuff requires the main keep. The Warden's Lodge. This one is bounty hunting. This one is cool, but it's also very dangerous. I'm gonna start by having the ability to rest, I think. Yes. 
New quest, the master below. This is a quest we will only complete very, very far away oh, in I time from now, my friends. <laughs> and Kanda wants to talk to us. I confess, I was hoping our meeting with Meowald would go a little differently. But then, you have gained an entire keep. I don't think I've seen anyone inherit land that quickly since Kai <laughs> the Younger read her father's will. And that's true. I wish I could have gotten through to him. He was far gone, but don't worry. The past is there that we might learn from it. I'm sure we'll find more answers in Defiance Bay. It will give you a base from which to go searching at least. And then, there are secrets beneath the keep yet. <laughs> With you at the helm, it should be easier to explore the endless paths. Indeed. <clears throat> oh, hey. speaking of which, I want to ask her about that uh, force door. It is good to see you here. I can feel oh. a change in the air already. There is much to do. Is there anything I can do to help? What is the state of the keep? Ah, she just shows me this. Okay. So, she didn't really give me an answer about the, the magical door down there. I'm just kind of guessing that it's now open. And now, my friends, it's time to make our way into somewhere else. I should probably rest first. But I'm gonna believe that wherever it is we are going, we may find a place to rest without Lady spending Dark. any camping supplies. Also, just checking for hidden items. Oh, this area goes a long way. Okay. Keeping an eye out. Mm hmm. Okay. And now, yeah, now we have access to the Wooden Plains. This will allow me access to Defiance Bay as well as Durford Village. I think I'm gonna go there first. And in this area, by the way, I think I am going to rest. As if I remember correctly, and there's gonna be some extremely tough fights, at least for my taste. Let's see, if I can make my way without fighting, <clears throat> I will. Unless it's like a free fight. Just follow the road. All right. Hush, Itumak. We'll just wait a little longer. So north to Kednua and west to Defiance Bay. This is also a possible companion here, which is Miss Sagani <coughs> and her puppy Itumak. <clears throat> now, this is a very cool character. Mostly because of the doggy, because the doggy is very cute. Uh, but I really... I don't really like her that much. <laughs> she seems very weak to me. Or at least the pet is very, very weak. In any case, let's talk to her and see what she has to say. Sagani. A dwarven woman, dressed in skins and hides, leans against a road marker. Her face is turned down, her eyes darkened by a thick stripe of face paint. She's sharpening a bone arrowhead with a scrimshaw-handled knife. Her attention, however, is focused on the bare figurine between her feet. A large, white-furred fox standing at her heels looks up at your approach. It's not him. Yeah, man, come on. The, the starting lines are, are ruined. Itumak. You seem lost. She lifts her head and looks at you. I know exactly where I am. It's my friend who's lost. What are you waiting for? I'm looking for a very, very old friend. I'm not sure what skin he's wearing now, but I'll know him when I see him. Uh, is your friend supposed to meet you here? Of course, the man who told me so was carrying a staff he claimed was made from dragon bone, but I know Whitewood when I see it. That should have been my first clue, but I had to try something. She doesn't sound like a dwarf, though. Back up. What does this stranger have to do with your friend? Here we go. I'm from an island to the far south called Nasitok. I came here looking for a village elder, a man we knew as Persok. 
I'm a hunter back home, so tracking someone wouldn't normally be a problem. But Persox's trail is cold, to say the least. Why can't you find him? There can't be that many of your people in the Durwood. He died when I was still a young girl. Forgot to mention that part, did I? I'm looking for his latest, re latest reincarnation, which could be anyone. <laughs> well, now, <laughs> that can be hard. And how long have you been looking for Persok? Five years. So you've been searching five years for a stranger you barely remember? Who could be anyone who could be anyone now? That about sums it up. Wow. Actually, I know how you feel. Hopefully you've got a better lead than I do. How does that statuette figure into it? She dusts the figurine on her trousers and raises it in, a, in her small, flat hand. It's carved in the shape of a bear, smooth and round. The polished adder is worn to a dull mat along its arched back and ovoid haunches. A soft glow emanates from within. It belonged to Persok. Before he returned to the wheel, he left a splinter of his soul in it. Something to help us find him later. Hmm. As she holds it out to you, you feel wisps of sensation. Not quite memories, but traces of someone. It was completely dark inside. But as I've gotten closer to Persok, it's glowed steadily brighter. Since I've reached the Deerwood, however, it's gotten hard to read. Some days it flickers and goes dark. Others it shines nice and bright. For a few hours. But most of the time it looks just like this. I could take a look at it. Or... The whole reason I'm standing here is because some so-called watcher from Forktvale told me he could take a look. For a few golden dukes, of course. I'll do it for free. Balmarsh, when I heard talk of a traveling mystic who could supposedly see souls. I knew it was a long shot, but what did I have to lose? I went to see this fellow and gave him the Audra figurine. He made a big show of moaning and rolling his eyes, and after I'd given him five golden dukes to lift the shroud, he told me to seek the crossroads in the field between the Wolf's Lair and the Twining Trees. <laughs> What's the Wolf's Lair? <laughs> Defiance Bay. Locals call the current Duke Wolfgrim. Sounds like it'd be fun to drink with. Is Twining Trees a real place? He meant Twin el Elms. I haven't been there yet, but I hear they have some especially memorable trees. Go hey, on. But I know the area well enough to recognize that he meant this place. Right between Defiance Bay and Twin Elms. I had a bad taste in my mouth, but my coin was spent and I'd already left an arrow in his knapsack as a friendly warning. Told him I'd come back and leave him with another if it turned out he was giving me the runaround. I've been here a week now. Guess he had the last laugh after all. May I see the figurine? Why? <laughs> I'm a real watcher. Leave that? After the story I just told you? You've got nothing to lose by letting me try. But if you try to run, just remember that my arrows are faster. She hands you the figurine, her chapped knuckles raising your hand. She watches you examine it, wary but curious. You raise the other bear, turning it in the light. As your eyes catch a tiny glinting scratch, the scenery around you melts away. You're standing on a cliff overlooking the water, seeing through eyes that aren't your own. You catch the musk of beasts amidst the fresh scent of vegetation, and your heart beats a little faster. You'll have to watch your step up here. You look down just long enough to see the sharp, pale cliffs drop into the water hundreds of feet below you. Oh, he died. <laughs> By falling off a cliff? Okay. Sure, sniff the breeze. Breathing deeply, you smell salt in the air. Wherever you're standing, wherever Persok is standing, must be near the ocean, not a lake. Examine the roads nearby. <clears throat> Deep ruts score the hard-packed dirt. There are, these are the marks of wagons, numerous and heavy laden. A large city is close. I see a vision of cliffs high over the water. Does that sound familiar? Your question is greeted with shrugs and silence. Return the figurine. I've got it. He's standing on a cliff. What just happened? Uh, what are you talking about? Okay. I told you, I'm a watcher. She blinks at you a few times, calculating. 
I know this sounds strange, but it's the truth. No coin to give you, even if I did believe you. Come with me. I've got other business in the area, and we can look for Persok on the way. Of a joke, you may be stuck with me for a while. <laughs> Lead the way. <clears throat> so this is like, like I said, we have a chance to pick up another companion okay. here. So Sagani is a ranger. She's a boreal dwarf. She has 15 might. Not as much as I would wish for a DPSer. Her constitution is 12, whatever. Dexterity kinda low. Perception is quite good actually. Int, decent, resilience, cool. <clears throat> She's just a, a well-rounded character, more than anything else. In terms of items, what does she come with? Uh, game, thank you. She comes with a fine hide armor. Which isn't bad. She has Masuk Hunting Bow. Just has a plus 8 to accuracy. Otherwise it's nothing special. Oh! Pierce slash crush damage? What? Blunt arrows to stun small quarry. This is actually quite nice, man. Having a ranged option to go through piercing immune enemies. It's quite nice. Okay, she also has a fine dagger and she also has a fine hatchet, which I will immediately give to my friend Eder here. Now, I don't plan on taking her with me. I'm simply gonna take her to the inn. Ah, I'm gonna try to unlock the path into Defiance Bay. Just look at the foxy, she's so cute. It's just a shame that she dies to anything. Pets in Path of the Damned are really not... And they're not strong like you kind of wish they were. They don't work as an off-tank. They don't really make um, a decent distraction to your enemies. They just kind of die. Okay, so in our map we have unlocked the way to the Defiance Bay. And I am now going to unlock the way into uh, the Deerwood. And I'm going to try and see if the Deerwood has an inn. And if there is an inn, I will leave my friend Sagani there. And she can also be useful, like let's say if my other characters die throughout this playthrough and I still want to play with the story companion, I can just pick her up. Because I think experience... Uh, gets shared with people that aren't with us. Uh, doesn't actually say, but I think it does. Oh, we have to go through the Stormwall Gorge. <clears throat> this is the area with the really tough opponents, if I remember correctly. When I say really tough opponents, I mean druids. I Maybe I'm just I'm doing something wrong. But every time I've played this game, druids are my are my biggest problem, man. And they're just they're they're extremely tanky. They have a lot of very highly damaging spells, a lot of attrition-based spells, like insect plague and crap like that. And they just you just die. <laughs> oh, corpse. Please don't be bait. Please don't be bait. Thank you. I mean, as long as we're kind of walking around in stealth, or in scouting mode, I should say, we should be safe to do this. Okay, it seems we are fine. Hey, Derford Village. Deerford, sorry. So this is a cool place because we have some cool gear to pick up as well as our next companion. A war traveler, I only require a moment. Greetings. The guard gives you an appraising eye. 
You've recently come to Deerford, I take it. I don't suppose you saw a young elven noblewoman on the road? I'm stuck in this wretched place with the rest of my unit until we find her. Who is she? Lady Ellis. He bites his lip. She's the daughter of Lord Nestor Herond, and she's gone missing. He sighs. Perhaps you could go speak with Lord Herond at the inn. He'll be grateful for the assistance, and it, would, and it could be the villagers will open up to you more than they have to us. Okay, so we have a new quest in Blood Legacy. So what is this inn? Mill Inn. Winfrid's Arms and Armory, and... In Dinas's Apothecary, Trigal's Curiary, and we also have the Grieving Mother, which is going to be our sixth companion. Okay, is this stealing? Oh, it is. Okay, so let, let's wait. We'll, we'll clear out this area afterwards. The Dracogen Inn. Since we're here, I might as well speak to the to the Lord guy. I There's a lot of characters. Find her. Surely even you can understand that. We're decent folk, my lord. Perhaps you should leave and check the wilds. I think this guy is just going over there. Yeah. Lord Herond. The man wears a deer-style robes, simple but elegant. His fine leather shoes look like they were made for padding around indoors, yet they're caked with mud. He yanks at a lock of hair twined around his silk-gloved finger. His fine features are etched with uh, anxiety. My child is out there. Do they not understand? My lord, we're doing everything we can. Unfortunately, these villagers... Beasts take them all. I don't care how you do it, but find her. <laughs> Your child is missing, I take it? Yes, Lady Alice, my daughter. I've asked around, but nobody in this mud hole has any concerns beyond their swine. They turn my men away like beggars and seem downright pleased to be of no use. But you, you're not one of my soldiers. And you look like you're used to getting your hands dirty. If you don't mind my saying so. Hmm. His guard leans in. My lord, a simple vagabond. Heron raises a hand to silence the man. If you find her, he nibbles the thumb of one silk glove. Tell her I won't be upset with her. She can come back and all will be well. I just want to make sure my Elise, my child, is safe. Nothing in the world is more important to me. Okay, I'd like to ask you a few questions about your daughter. Elise. Of course. Describe Lady Elise. She's a striking young woman, bears more resemblance to her mother than to me. She has auburn hair and delicate, well-bred features. She must be... oh, 28 or 29 now? Tell me about her disappearance. We'd stopped in Deerford for a few days. On our fourth evening here, I was planning... I was making plans to continue our journey. Lady Elise was feeling unwell and went to bed. When I retired a couple hours later, I found that she had vanished. None of my men had seen her go, and no one at the inn knew where she was. Since then, my people have been combing the village, but we've yet to find a clue, and the locals have been no help. Why did you and Elise come to Durford? Durford? <laughs> it was merely a stop along the way to Aina's rest. However, she took ill shortly before her arrival, so it seemed prudent to allow her a few days to recover. What's in Aina's rest? He frowns as if about to protest, but he gives in with a sigh. Lady Elise has reached an age where it is prudent for her to marry. Given this legacy business, I can't let her fertile years slip by, nor do I want her womb to fester in the presence of so many hollowborn. Oh, God. Ugh. Where's the rest of your family? Surely they wouldn't want to miss your daughter's betrothal. Lady Harond is ill-suited for travel, I'm afraid, and unfortunately, Elise has few other close relatives. My sister and her husband, Elise's uh, aunt and uncle, of course, have been visiting a deer these past months. He rubs his knuckles. And as for siblings, Elise has none. My wife has only given birth to Oloborn, since Elise, that is. 
It seems there will be more potential suitors in Neo Eomar or Neo Yarma. You think I haven't considered that? Arranging a suitable match is difficult. The best prospects for my child lay in Anus's rest. I see. But going back to your daughter. Uh, previous questions. I heard you arguing, arguing with the innkeeper. A petty, small-minded man. Just like the rest of them around here. I've been paying him an honest fee for board and bed, and yet he can't be bothered to stir himself to concern for my Alice. Hmm. Actually, he seemed angry at you. People from these backwater villages take offense for sport. You have to but show up with a full coin purse, and they'll hear insults in the jingle of your step. <laughs> they forget that Duke Hadret came from the privileged classes, as did all of the other earls and lords who financed the rebellion they're so proud of. This is why I'm hoping you can help. He tugs at the lock of hair again. I should have never trusted these people around my child. What about yourself? I'm Lord Nestor Harrand of Defiance Bay. My family has been prominent there since Imperial times. Our primary estate is on the outskirts of Brackenbury, but we have holdings in New Haomar as well. Those went to my sister and her husband. Goodbye. Okay. So, let's park Sagani over here. Hail and well met. The innkeeper digs with, uh, inside the mug with a dirty rag. His eyes under his thick brows are tired but watchful. He gives you a quick nod as you approach the bar. Don't see many travelers these days. Something I can do for you. What was that exchange with the nobleman about? He looks up from polishing his tankard and glowers at the lord. Folk around here is decent. They mind their own business. You want to stick your nose in it? Go talk to him yourself. Tell me about Lord Heron's daughter. He frowns and shrugs. His lordship says she up and went missing the other day. He wipes a tangled with his ragged towel, twisting it with swift, jerking motions. I don't know any more than that. However these lording bastards handle their affairs ain't no business of mine. Hmm. You look agitated. Something about this doesn't sit right with you, does it? He slams the clean tanker down on the bar. Damn right it don't. That lord slaunters in here like he's cut from cleaner cloth than the rest of us. And yet, he shakes his head. Look, I don't want no trouble from you or him or anybody else. I'm just waiting for him to tire off my ale and leave so things can go back to normal around here. I won't stand by and allow an innocent girl to come to harm. Help me find her. He leans over the bar and sighs. That girl, Elise, she was looking to disappear. You should have seen her. Watching the door like a sheep at slaughter. All the same, she didn't hardly speak to no one. Only folk I seen her talk to striggle. He nods at the east window. His shops by the broken tower. Bit of a hothead, that one. My advice is to let the matter drop. Like I say, it don't profit to dig around in other people's business. Okay, never mind. I want to talk about something else. Uh... I want to order food and drinks. Let me see if this is what is how it works. Party management. Yes. Okay. Let Very me well. dismiss her. She's dropped over there. And... Ooh, oh, God. Wait. Oh, man. This is quite good. But 5,000 gold for this? God damn. <laughs> I do want one camping supply. We have some more resting bonuses here. Two might, two constitution, two intellect. Very good. 10% damage against beast. Quite nice. We do need to rest, right? Yeah, we do. Okay, so... Keep you. Uh, let's rest. In the old stables. Or do I want something better here? I think just the old stables for now. How do you do? I have questions about Deerford. He runs his rag around the rim of the mug. Ask. Tell me about the village. Walk from one bridge to the next and you've seen it. 
We're quiet, hard-working folk. We keep to ourselves and don't take to being pushed around. He glares at the well-dressed man uh, standing off to the side. Used to be a castle here, built by some family of a Deden Thanes back when the Empire first came. Only one tower still standing and that's part of Trigal's shop now. Sid, that barred by the fire, could spin you the yarn if you're so inclined. Hmm, who lives in Dilford? Not many anymore. Hard to keep people around when everybody here is birthing Aloborn. But we got a few who stick around and do business. Triggle's a leather courier, Indina crafts potions, and Winfred trades in general goods. Rumbald's a pig farmer, or was anyway. Okay. Tell me about Triggle. He's a courier. Treats leather and makes armor and a few other goods with it. Problem is, the smell of tallow and deer shit tends to put people off their food and his shop's right next door. Yeah, <laughs> I can see that. <clears throat> What's in Dina's story? Lady's a clever hand with the potions and poultices, got herself into trouble with the nest of worms or so I hear, her cart's on the east end of town. And Winfred? Been around here longer than I have. Nice enough fellow, but never could find his way to the end of a sentence. His shop's across the square. <laughs> Something happened to Rumbal's pigs, I take it? Them ogre carried them off. Now he squeals more than his herd ever did. <laughs> he shrugs. It is rotten luck. Okay. Ah, about that ogre. You don't hardly see him this close to town. Ogres and kit don't mix well. Ugly bastards. But they're smart enough to know that to know that much. You want to know more? Talk to Rombald. His farm southwest of here. You said you don't see many travelers. Of course not. Why would they come here? We got bandits on the road and an ogre in the forest, and that, <laughs> as that yapping fool Rombald will tell you, worse yet, hasn't been a healthy child born here in over a year. Most kids that come here is just passing through. Okay. Well, <clears throat> goodbye then. Okay. So, we have parked our friend Sagani there. There's a green dragon here. Okay. There's a lot of people with yellow names that I don't care about. Sid, I'm guessing, is the bard. And I will still need to explore the upstairs. There's a lot of stuff for me to do here. But I won't be doing that just yet. My next step is actually quite close but I will not start it now potions for sale potions and ah, oh <laughs> the woman looks briefly through you as if she doesn't know you're there so this right here is gonna be our next step hey. but this entire episode has been about dialogue um, there's a lot of interesting stuff going around, we've reached a new area, we've picked up some new quests, we have new people to meet, a new village. Uh, but I do think that once we speak to this lady right here, the grieving mother, she is gonna have another large text. So, I'm gonna leave that for the next episode, to spare my throat, and also you guys... <laughs> Uh, we will do that in a different one. So, as always, thank you so much for being here with me in the channel, watching some Pillars of Eternity. I hope you guys are having fun. If you have any questions, suggestions, anything at all, leave a comment below. If you want to get notified about other videos coming to the channel, feel free to subscribe. It's a free and easy way to support my channel, and videos are coming out every single day. And I hope to see you all in the next episode, where we will have our full party of six people. Until then, stay safe everyone.